Hi, it's Andy, and welcome to the Hills Church Podcast. Our hope is that this will help your life and inspire your faith. Thanks again for checking us out. Um, here's what the Bible says. Psalm 92, verse 13 says this. Plant it in the house of the Lord. You will flourish. Victoria just said, it's good to be in church. I want to tell you something now. If you're planted in the house of the Lord, the Bible says that you're going to flourish. Yeah? Um, I, I, we prayed just now. Uh, I heard a couple of testimonies this week of prayer. Um, one guy was in hospital, and we got a message to say, the doctor said they've had a second chance. Who knows what the second chance is? God. Um, God is bigger than all our situations and all our problems. But when you are planted in the house of the Lord, you are going to flourish. So the fact that you're here this weekend, you're with us, um, or maybe, hey, you're listening to this message, or whatever journey you're on, you're going to flourish when you're in the house of the Lord. But I just wanted to let you know this weekend that uh, you're in church, you're here, and I just want you to know that God is good. God's character is good. God's for you, and the Bible says when he is for you, not one thing can be against you. So you know what? If you hear nothing else this morning, I say nothing else. I'm going to read 17 verses, and by the grace of God, that's going to happen okay. But I can tell you something now, that God is good. I listened to someone recently, and they said that the church has got away from reminding someone, people, the characteristics of God, and perhaps there's going to be a collection of talks brew out of that. Um, I'm not sure, but I wanted you to know that God is good. John, 3, John chapter 13, though, verses 1 to 17, and this is what it says. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Verse 2, the evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas. Did you know that the devil is out to prompt you and I? against the things of God. You're going to walk with the Lord. You've got to understand there's someone against you as well. Hashtag side note. Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. Verse 4. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, you are going to wash my feet. Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Verse 10, Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet, for their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them, you call me teacher? and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Verse 17, now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. God, we thank you this morning for your word. We ask, God, that you would speak to us in these next few moments, that you would encourage us and inspire us. In Jesus' name, and we all said, hey, amen. Hey, I, I think this message this morning, just going to let the cat out of the bag, as it were, straight up. I don't think this is a message to challenge us this morning. I think this is a message, I, I don't think, I believe this is a message that's going to encourage us this morning. Is that all good? Uh, it's, a, it's a message that God's put on our heart, my heart, obviously, for this house. Um, we believe this word's from God, obviously. Um, but I'm not really unsure of what kind of week you've had. But here's what I know is we've all had a week. Yeah? We actually gained a donkey this week. 
some random donkey appeared, not in our field, my father's field, so we have now two donkeys. The problem is it was fighting our donkey and now our donkeys ran away. <laughs> Can I be about this afternoon when I go chase a donkey? No? Nah? If you're listening to this online, I'm sorry. Let's see who we are. We live in the northwest of Ireland and we're crazy. But I just pray this message encourages you this morning because here's what happens in this context of this conversation we just read in John chapter 13. Jesus is teaching us a really big lesson here because he draws all the attention to himself. He brings us to the focal point of he's facing his death. Let's tell you this morning, Hills Church, if you believe in eternity, I, I choose to believe there is a life after this. I believe we're here just for a while on earth. I believe there's heaven and I believe there's another place. And I, I want to go to heaven. I want to spend my time with the Lord. And it's through faith that we believe that. And that's what this church is all about. It's centered and focused around Jesus. But Jesus is at the end of his life and he knows things are coming and he knows he's about to, his life is literally about to end. He's going to go back to be with the Father. And here he is teaching us a fundamental lesson. Because he turns culture upside down because the world we live in, the culture that we live in, is the more stuff you have and the more money you have, well, the more served you are. How many of us have ever been in the plane and some people go to the left and we go to the right? First class, they're served. They're, the, the more money we have, the more richer we are, the more we get served. Well, this is what Jesus is really pointing out in this narrative is, and this is what I love about the people of the Northwest, to be honest, and I love about this church, is the most important person in this story as the one who's serving the people. So the most important person in the room is the one who's serving other people. So what really is saying is, in the world, your money and your stuff brings importance to you, brings value to you. And the word, it's the more you know God, the more you serve God, the more you love others, the more you serve others, the more important you will be. If you want to be important to God, he's saying, serve other people. As a matter of fact, we're going to read on down in the verses, verse 34 and 35. He says, I have a new command I give you to love one another. But we'll follow that up in a little second. So what I love about this church, though, is that honestly, I'm not just saying this. I'm not going to brag about it. But we, we launched groups last week, and already 70 people have signed up their group. Isn't that amazing? Let's give everybody a wee cheer. Um, uh, we, we come in here on a Sunday morning, everything's sitting, stuff, stuff's up, things are happening, screen's on. Production every week in this church is absolutely exceptional. Would you agree? Tea and coffee in this church is always exceptional. Would you agree? You're always welcome. You always have a sign. If you're here for the first time, the reason we put a flag out of the road is not for me. It's for you if you're here for the first time. So that you're not going to get lost or anything else. We hope that you've had a great experience coming here. We want to welcome you. We want to honor you. The Hills Kids is always incredible. I mean, there's so many different departments in this church. The screens all, this didn't just happen by fluke. This is a house of people that want to serve other people. And I am proud to be a part of it. This is not a me church, this is a we church. And it's the culture that we want to create from day one. And I pray and I hope that we've been able to do that. This is not a church about the one kind of special person. This is a group of a load of people, load of people coming together to serve each other to do what God's called us to do. The more we serve others, the more value we have to God. And you see, Victoria and I were away. We went away for a, little, a night away at the weekend uh, to celebrate her 30th birthday. I know she's 30. Wow, we're over that. Sorry, Victoria, for drawing attention to you and the fact that I'm 40 next year and everyone's talking about how old I am and how young you are, yet you think you're old, which is mental. Um, but we just were walking through um, Korean yesterday morning and went to Dunn Stores. Wow. Yeah. Great value on there, by the way, <laughs> and uh, all of the rest. Uh, but we were just having a chat, and we were just saying, like, life is a blink. Like, it's so short. And I know you're going to university again, Andrew, on Monday, and I know you're telling me you've another two years, and it's so long. Life is a blink. I'm starting to sound now like an old man. But it's short, hey. We're only here for a while. I'm not going to go all doom and gloom on us to preach eternity, but the facts are we are only here for a time. And the only thing that we really have is, is time. That's all we kind of really have. I mean, and in, our, in our deathbeds and years to come, and I hope many, 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 many more years to come, 
is the measure of my success and my wealth and my, my being as a person isn't really going to be defined by the amount of money in my bank. Now, I'm not talking about blow all your money. Uh, maybe we should talk about money sometime in church. It is good to be wise with our money. Yes? God's called us to tithe into his house. It's my first offering of my salary goes every single month to tithe into the house of the Lord. Because in the house of the Lord, I will flourish. I want to be wise with the money. I want to be steward with it. But the truth is, we are not valued about our money. The truth is, I think the true value of us is the impact we're going to have on other people. I, when, I, when, I, when on my deathbed, I, I want to be known for someone that Andy Gamble told me the truth. He told me that God was a savior. He told me that I needed to be saved. He told me he was upright with his faith. He was forward about it. He was authentic about it. He loved me. He valued me. He invested in me. That's what I want to be known for. The true success really of a person isn't really with the value in the bank account. It's the deposit we have in other people. Because all we really have is time. And the only thing that we can really impact on our time on earth is other people. And the only thing that we can take to heaven with us is other people. Yeah? So it's so important that we get right what we do with our time because, like, like we, we, we were talking yesterday, we went back, at, we passed this tennis court and all these people were out playing tennis. And I, I don't know about you, but, like, the, the, more, the more I get around successful people, the more I see they're up and at it. They're up doing stuff. They're out of the house and they're just active and they're getting out and they're doing stuff. It's just the way it is. And, and there's something about the fact of looking at our time, weighing up what we're doing with our time. And as we approach this week, um, we're going to just pray at the end for all our groups and why we'd be involved in church, why we'd be involved in something. Because you, like the facts are, there's only going to be six groups right at Christmas. Like if you're in, if you're in 15 fa other group settings or different things, sure, like r why not? Like give it another couple of hours. Like I mean, because it's really all you have is time. And, and, and as you invest in our people, or maybe it's not through a group this morning, it's just to signify the fact we are launching groups this week. If you're not in a group, hey, all good, and you're flourishing, and you're doing good, that's fine. But the facts are, I just want to encourage us this morning, that I believe we are a house that invests in each other. I, I know I'm standing here today because of the prayers of our people. I know I am. There's people in this church that's prayed for me, they've encouraged me, They've, they've financially supported me. They help me out. I mean, every time I have a problem with carriage, ring Joel. Poor Joel. Don't even want to go near Graham Campbell with all the help he's given me in my house. And I could, I could go on all day here talking to people helping us practically, spiritually. When I went to Bible college, people in this house invested financially. I'm telling you, this is a generous house. Everything we go to do, there's just favor upon it. It's incredible. There's a culture that's creating in this house that's, that's got this stuff, that, that realizes the most important part and person in the room is the person who serves. They're getting this stuff. So they are. See, it's too short to hold grudges. It's too short to get angry. It's too short to waste your time gossiping what other people are not doing. It's just too short. You see, we need to be people that, and I believe we're this people, like, I just want to get away from, small people talk about people, hey. We just need to get away from talking about each other. It's just, here's the thing, here's what I find, right? You know what the enemy wants to do? Remember when we went back to what he says, that, look, the, the, enemy, the, enemy, the enemy already was, was tricking Judas before it happened. Do you see before you're going to stumble? You, it's not the stumble, it's, it's with the enemy tempting. And the devil had already prompted Judas. Hey, the devil wants us to go into communities and go, I don't want to join a group because see all them ones there, sure. And see all the things. You know, I don't want to get a baby. The best investment you can really do is get a babysitter if you've got children, get to a group. Or get, I mean, but, but, but talking, I often find that People that are jacked up in their own lives, what, what the easiest thing to do is talk about other people. See, on the way home from church today, talk about your own marriage on the way home if you're married for the 15 minutes on the way home. I dare you, because you're scared to do it. You're, man, I'm going to hit you right now in the head, and this is going to hit me back. So there's a double whammy here. I'm going to go, I guess, punch my face coming back at me. Grow up on the way home from church today and be a man. And stop checking on out. Too often, the women have got to be, listen, be a man. Ask your woman on the way home, how am I doing as a husband? Sheepers, this is an awkward conversation on the way home. I have dug myself under some hole. A good hole to dig, though. Better spend the next hour 
developing what God's going to do here. They're not chattering and chattering. Because they're and I can tell you something, I don't care if you're 65 in this room, 74 in this room, 21 in this room, we all do that. We all can do it. Anyone else? I know it's just me. I get it. But your time, what we're doing with it, investing in each other the right way is a powerful thing. Can you imagine 15 minutes go, hey, what about, the, hey, I don't really like the way, or maybe you could, man, are you up for the challenge? Whew. I definitely am now. I've just said it in front of the entire church. Anyone else listening online? This thing's recorded. Can't erase this. Hands of applause. I love what we talked about last weekend when we looked at M- Moses's. Like you know, we looked at the, the woman who le- the woman lifted him out of the water. The Bible says she's not even referred to as a name. I, I love the fact that this church is a group of people that are about doing things in the unseen. It's not about being seen. They do stuff because the Lord has called them to do it. And that is what I love about this house. And God has really sent to us Hills Church in this season. Will we lay down our differences for the one thing that we have in common? And that is Jesus. And I believe when a group of people come together and are in a common theme in unity around God's word, it's a very powerful thing. Yes? And I think we all have differences. How many of us know that I'm a little bit different to you? Shocker. We are all different, but we would see that in a community and we would serve each other regardless because we have one thing in common, Jesus. Now, I'm not saying we should all go out sinning and doing all this crazy stuff, but I am saying that it is okay to be different. Yes? If we would be people that would lay down our differences for the one thing that we have in common, which is Jesus, I believe it's going to be a powerful thing. See, this is what we've said every, day, every single week in this, this collection of talks. Everybody needs grace, everybody needs somebody, and somebody needs you. We all need the grace of God. Everybody needs somebody. And somebody, more importantly, needs you. So when someone does go off track a little bit, would we be people that respond with grace? Jesus in this story already knew that Judas was going to betray him. Hills Church, people are going to let us down. It's not nice, though, when people let us down. But everybody needs the grace of God. We all need the grace of God. We have all fallen short, the Bible says, of the glory of God. So when we are approaching each other, when we set ourselves up of going, let's be gracious, because everybody needs grace. Everybody needs somebody, and somebody needs you. All good? You see, to sidetrack a little bit in this message, talent is a very, very, very dangerous thing. We have never, ever, ever been in a more talented generation. Would you agree? Talent is going to blow this place up. I am excited for what God is going to do through, listen, the whole church is launching youth. How amazing is that? We're j- literally just about to launch young adults. We're not approaching it on a fancy high horse. We will let it roll as a group, get them going. Let's see what God's going to do. Because the truth is, the generation that's coming behind us guys are amazing. Would you agree? We've never had more access to the gospel. We've never had more access to the things of God. We've never had more access to some of the most incredible preachers on planet Earth. We can go podcasting, we can go online, we can do literally just about anything. Talent is out there, would you agree? But listen, Hills Church, I am bottom line straight straight as a day. I know I'm not the most talented out there. I can click a button tomorrow and watch a sermon anywhere else in the world. Honestly, I have got away from listening to sermons. I'm sorry if that offends some people because I often get asked what I'm reading. I am not a big reader, but this is what I am. I am a preacher that gets revelation from God, and I go with that. I have found that my study time is spent praying, walking, four different things going around me, and God somehow speaks to me. Sometimes God can speak to me more watching a movie in the cinema than in my study room. It's just weird, but it's what works for me. 
I want to be a person that doesn't function out of my talent, but out of the presence of God. Would, you, would that be okay with you? I, I don't want to be the best in the room. I want to be a person that serves other people and loves God. I want to be a person that my, my, my ability to communicate, my ability to do stuff, comes out of who I am in God, not who I am as, as a person. So you there for our talent, I look out at this church and I see so much talent. It is amazing. But sometimes it can be a dangerous thing because it can trick you into thinking that they are more holy than the next person. Nonsense. Talent does not equal holiness. I only can become, I will become a better husband, Victoria, when I spend more time with God. And I need to do it. I'll become a better dad when I spend more time with God. I'll become a better friend. I'll become less of Andy Gamble the more I spend with God. And I'm going to tell you something now. I need more time in the presence of God. I have got, not got this thing figured out. I do not always respond the way that I should respond. I do not serve others always the way I should. I want to be a better follower of Jesus. I want to go deeper in my relationship with him. I want to get into the old school words like anointing and appointing. I want to be that person. I want you to hear when you come to church, not what Andy Gamble saying, what God is saying. I don't want you to see my talent, but it's kind of easy when you're me because you can't really see my talent. But I nailed the reading this morning. You've got to give me that. I crushed it. I learned the fingers. I mean, you've got to have a, it's a stupid mic, but it helps. Take me through whatever. That's a sermon maybe for a different day. Let's not be a group of people who talk about each other's weaknesses. Rather, let's be people who cheer each other on. Let's be people who see the power of God. If you're here this morning and you're wondering about your inabilities and you're looking at them and you're going, I can't do this and I can't do that and I'm not able to do this. Simple question. Simple equation. Sorry. Spend time with the Lord. God can do anything you know, way more than you could ever dream of or imagine, way more than your wildest dreams in the message translation. When you're in a relationship with God, you'll be a better person. Your relationships with others will grow. A friend of mine in Liverpool says this, look, he says, we learn in, circ- we learn in rows, but we grow in circles. Listen, you've got to be in a circle. And here's the bottom line. Jesus created a circle of guys around him. They're all in the room. If you are in a circle of people right now that don't accept you for who you are, run for the hills. Oh, I just did a little church promotion there. If this church, you're feeling that you're not welcome, you're not valued, you're not appreciated, if you don't fit into this house, come and have a chat, surely. Let's meet for coffee, ASAP. Meet me this week. But if you're not being, if it don't work out for you, get in around a circle of people that's going to love you, appreciate you, because you don't got to change for nobody. You don't got to be You don't got to prove yourself to me, to anyone else. You be exactly who God's called you to be. You spend time with the Lord. You love him. Listen, glorify and our plug. It's our daily reading plan. We do as a church every day. We'll give you a free year subscription. Just send us a text. Message us. We'll give it to you as a gift. Give them it all the time. Thousands of hours of people reading the Bible every month. It's the most important thing you can do is read God's word. Yes? Get to know him better. Get into his presence. It's going to help you no matter what situation you're going to face. God is for you. And when he's for you, no one can be against you. But if you're in a circle of people that do not honor and appreciate you for who you are, get out. Get in our circle. But I pray in this week happening, groups are going to happen. And you're going to find a community, a circle that you can be yourself in. You can start opening up and being a little bit more vulnerable and start to grow in that circle. You see, there is no power in me, but there is tremendous power in we. My dad used to always say this saying, I don't know who you quoted that, but this old man used to say this, they might beat me, but they'll not beat us. <laughs> John Willis is laughing, it must be some old man from Donna Donna in reference is a place out there 12 miles away. Don't blink, you'll miss it. They might beat me, 
but they'll not beat us. And I love when we come to situations of trials and tribulations in our life, how people get around you. We are standing here today, Victoria and I, we could tell you hundreds of stories of people in this church that every time came around us, they've encouraged us. Our house, I literally was going to put on Instagram this week, we and the boys can't stop sneezing because our house is like a florist. Every half hour, there was another bunch of flowers delivered to our house. Literally, we could sell flowers for a week and we'd still sell more. Blown away by people's kindness, people's goodness, people's generosity, your kind words. Always encouraging. Check, we need a hand with something, we give you a shout. Moving house shortly, so get yourselves all ready. If you want to laugh, nobody's allowed to paint though. Not like the last one we moved on to, but we're not going to go there today. God is good, eh? He gives you great people. Because we're not a me church, we are a we church. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. <sighs> love each other. That's how we're going to be known. We learn in rows and we grow in circles. Bam. John. Johnny, come up. You should only be tapper things, John. What are you thinking your thing? A drum in your back? It's called track. It's amazing. Hope you enjoy our drums that aren't there. <laughs> isn't, our, isn't the music amazing in this church? Let's give them each year, actually. Good job, John. God has accepted you. You are accepted. You are chosen. You're equipped. You're every single thing that God wants. I ask anyone, what's the fun? I, I've been asking people over the last number of weeks, I've even noticed I'm doing it. I, I keep saying, what do you not like of yourself? I can ask you, I can answer you just like that. What do you not like of yourself? Straight away. You've probably known because I've asked a whole bunch of you the same question. But I've also asked the opposite question. What do you like about yourself? <laughs> I just answer automatically my height. Great being tall. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. God's designed you to be in relationship with him. The whole thing, this collection of talks, the conversation of that when you come to any season in your life, that you would never have to stand alone. Someone's ill this morning, they, they messaged me, I straight back saying, hey, this, what do you need you know, to help you? you know, but you're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're perfectly the way you are. There's things going on even in people's life this week and in these last months that haven't really dialed up to what you kind of thought they were going to dial up to. God is in control. Be assured of that this morning. Super easy to stand and say that in a good old season and all that stuff. Listen, life's going up and down too, guys. We need some miracles in our life. Maybe just not the biggest ones right now. Been there. God's for you. His hand's upon you. He wants you in the house of the Lord. He wants to distract you. There's an enemy who wants to distract you out of it, but God wants you in it. Heard plenty for being in church. Heard plenty for signing up their group today. Just go to Connect Corner if you don't do admin, because neither do I. If I signed myself up for a group, I'd probably, I don't know, I'd probably, I don't know what I would do. I'd be, I don't know what would happen. Victoria's going to be at Connect Corner right now. Take the barcode. Because you're fearfully and wonderfully made. The most important person in the room is the person who serves. So who are you going to serve this week? What are you going to bring to group? Remember, you going to group isn't about you getting, it's about you giving. What can you help? What are you going to encourage? Who are you going to make laugh? Who are you going to invite? How's God going to use you this week? What's he going to do? Because he wants to use you. Because he's a hand on you. He's, his he's, he's got your life. I could go all day. Amen. Hey, thanks again for checking out the Hills Church podcast. Hey, if this message has inspired or encouraged you in any way, why don't you share it with a friend? 
Hi, as well as that, we meet every Sunday at 11 a.m. at the Waterside Theatre, and we'd love to see you at one of our services. But hey, thanks again for checking out the podcast. Why don't you subscribe to our channel?